What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Plugins Hut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. Today might go a little bit longer than normal as I'm covering two plugins and just talking a little bit about WordCamp US. So let's just kick it right off. State of the Word happened. WordCamp US happened this past weekend over in St. Louis. I didn't get a chance to go, but I did transcribe Matt Mullenweg's uh, presentation uh, or the state of the word. And you can find it on my website, mattreport.com slash state of the word. Go to the website, click on it. You'll see his face. Click that. Um, I transcribed his talk through the Temi service, which is okay in terms of its accuracy of, you know, voice to text. Um, but sort of the idea here is to highlight, he said Gutenberg 72 times. He said block or blocks 84 times, you know, depending on uh, a little bit of margin of error there, depending on the Temi service. But the point is, we all know, Blocks are here. Gutenberg is here. We're pushing forward with it. And for the remainder of like the next year, they'll be focusing on uh, really shoring up the editing experience with Gutenberg and making sure that folks can build out, uh, you know, very feature rich content. So really excited about that. And that's why I want to highlight two Gutenberg plugins today. Uh, the first one was or is the slides plugin, which actually creates a presentation or a slide deck out of Gutenberg blocks right in your WordPress website. And this was sort of like the catch uh, to Matt Mullenweg's uh, uh, WordCamp US uh, talk, State of the Word, was that he did the whole presentation. He was up on stage. He was showing his slides. And then he left it with like, oh, one more thing at the end. The entire presentation was done with this plugin, so it's pretty cool. I wanted to show it to you because I think uh, I think I'm gonna be using it for you know small meetings or presentations, especially at our local WordPress meetup, um, and maybe some marketing stuff. It's kind of interesting to see where this is, this will go because you could have like these very lightweight courses that you could use this for, right, to teach people how to do certain things, um, and I think it's gonna work a treat for things like that. Second plugin, um, keeping along the lines of Gutenberg, is this uh, editor's kit plugin. It's called Blocks Block Options in WordPress.org. So it's WordPress.org slash plugin slash block options, uh, made by Jeffrey Caradang. And uh, it's a nice addition to Gutenberg, um, sort of like a Gutenberg-ish add-on, uh, but very specific items, right? So it's not like just layouts and pretty designs and things like that, some functional elements of the Gutenberg editor. Um, and there's a couple of things in there that I want to highlight, which I think, you know, might be useful to you. Lastly, of course, I can't forget because I'm doing this charity drive. If you like these hats, um, go to store.mattreport.com. All of the profits for the remainder of the year, if you're buying these for yourself or for a loved one, uh, all of the profits will go to the WP and Up Foundation. Uh, I'm donating those profits there because they're a great organization supporting mental health and awareness in the WordPress space. I built this site with WooCommerce, two blocks right here on the homepage. Uh, and uh, I use Printful. The Printful.com store is the back end. They're the ones making the hats. It connects to WooCommerce. It was pretty painless. I built this whole site as basic as it is in a couple hours. Uh, so if you want to see a video on that, uh, let me know in the comments below. Happy to share that. All right. So you can quickly see I had that presentations block up. That's what we're going to start with. So we're going to start with that slides plugin. If you're searching for it in your website, I'm going to just type slides. Uh, I don't know if it pops up because now it's going to end up on the second page because the word slides is a tricky word to rank for. <laughs> and you'll see it right down here. So it's got this sort of generic uh, icon there, uh, 40 active installs uh, to the uh, at the time that I'm recording this, right? So uh, the other thing here to mention is I'm doing all of this before WordPress 5.3. I have Gutenberg uh, standalone plugin activated. So some of these things might be in your core WordPress not the presentations, but some of the Gutenberg things might be in your core WordPress by the time you watch this. So when you activate the slides plugin, it creates a presentation's custom post type. Great for organization. And uh, I'm gonna, I already created one, so let's just dive right into editing it. You just name it just like you were any other page or post, my first presentation. And you can see it's absorbing the styles of my theme. Uh, you'll see this background image here because this is in the Gutenberg editor. This is the 2020 theme, by the way. I'm going to do a video on that once I get a chance. A new, vi a new video. I already did a preview. I'll do the full review uh, soon. Uh, but it's going to adopt all of your type styles, uh, font styles, into the slide. So if you have a pretty good you know, font selection or, or look and feel to your WordPress website, you're off to the races. You're good to go. If you need to, to edit it... You can do all of the global editing uh, on the right side under the documents uh, pane 
uh, in the WordPress editor. So you can see I just minimized some of this stuff. The uh, setup is if you wanted to modify the standard in the widescreen uh, presentation style, uh, if you wanted to come in and modify the base font, I won't go into every single one here, uh, the heading font, the background colors, if you want to modify that, the background image, if you wanted to put a background image, uh, transition effects is where you'll probably want to look to first because you know that's you kind of like that little custom uh, catch to your to your presentation. You can come and change the fade slide, so you can get you know pretty. Uh, granular with, you know, even the transition speed, fast or slow, uh, and setting up controls, control arrows, and a progress bar. I mean, it's pretty powerful, right? For a plugin that was just released, you can do some fun things with it. And uh, I'm excited to use some of this stuff. And you can see here that each slide is a Gutenberg block, technically. Uh, and then within that block, are the blocks of your you know content or formatting. So on this slide here, it's my heading, I can kind of move this around just like I do with uh, you know, any other uh, Gutenberg block. I can come in here and type in some speaker notes if I wanted to. And you'd also notice that when I'm clicked into a block, on the right-hand side, I have uh, all of the finer adjustments to an individual slide. So you saw all those global adjustments before in the document pane. If I come into the individual block, let's click in that, I can come and modify the font colors and uh, the coloring around each slide. So pretty cool. You can see that I right here I use the... Uh, unordered uh, item or list item uh, block. So works with that, works pretty easy there. Right over here, I did two columns, um, which I didn't put any content in, so it's a little bit hard to to kind of see that, but I put two columns in there so you can split up your, you know, your columns, which is pretty cool. And now I'll just add another uh, slide block so we can see other things that we can do. So if I say slide number four, this is just a paragraph text. I want to turn that into a heading. And then I'll add another block. I think the one thing that throws me off a little bit is that in the regular Gutenberg editor, so if you're just in a post, uh, I believe that the add block icon loads right here, whereas now it's sort of off to the right a little bit. So that's just a little different for me. Uh, I'm going to add this media and text block. I only have one image on this site. <laughs> how to podcast and then I'll change that to medium. So, you know, that's just your, your traditional uh, Gutenberg block, right? So it's just, I can switch it to an image. What happens if I do that? So that just drops in the image, I'll switch it back to, whoops, it's the block styles. Now I'm not gonna be able to get it back yet. I can't see it because my, my my laptop screen is covering the this other screen. So. It's pretty cool because you can you can just use whatever Gutenberg blocks um, that you're used to using, right? And for the most part, from the the, the short testing that I've done, uh, it works pretty good. So let's update that and let's preview it. And here it is on the front end of my website. Again, it's just absorbing the the font styles from the website. I can use the the left and right arrows to transition through my slides. You can see the transition effect happens. Uh, that's this last block that I put in. So I just have these four blocks. Pretty cool, pretty easy to use. Um, and the formatting looks great. Matt went through a whole presentation. It didn't break. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good sign. Um, and if you had a second page, or excuse me, a second monitor, um, you could have the speaker notes, right? The speaker view where you could be controlling the uh, transition of the slides. It, you know, it could be timing you, all of that fun stuff. Although I don't know why it's not doing it here. I don't know if there's a, a play button I'm supposed to hit, uh, but we can play with that and figure it out. But pretty easy. I just wanted to show you how that you can now set up or how to set up the slides uh, using Gutenberg. So that's pretty fun. Let's move over to editor's kit. So the first thing I'll do is edit this post. And I just want to show you a handful of features that I, I think you'll find very useful with editor's kit. And maybe you can integrate that into your own uh, long form editing experience, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is put in an image, media gallery, it's the only image I have, like I mentioned before, and let's make that wide width, update, preview. Okay, so we'll scroll down, there's my image in the middle of, uh, in the, middle of the post. One of the cool things from Editor's Kit if I click on this more settings of the block, of the individual block, you can see that I have this new option called visibility settings. 
So if I click visibility settings, I can actually hide this on these three devices, or I can go and say, hide this on logged in users or hide this on logged out users. So imagine a world where you have this like very lightweight membership site, or you have a logged in user feature, um, or something specific in you know, like a content upgrade or, or again, a membership store, whatever, you can get pretty granular with showing individual blocks to at least the logged in user. And maybe you can even extend it to, you know, roles in the future. But uh, let's just test the hide on mobile. So I'm going to click on hide on mobile, close that, update the page. Let's preview the page. Image is still there, of course, because we're in desktop view. Let's shrink the post, boom, it disappears on mobile, comes back, uh, roughly tablet is probably this size. So obviously it appears again, but bam, it goes away again when we go to mobile. So that's a really cool feature. If you need to get kind of granular with your content or, uh, you know, like I mentioned in a previous video, I've been doing this very long form, uh, podcast guide on my other site. There's a lot of images there. There's two or three or four that I might be like, you know, I don't want that to load on mobile. There's just too much. <laughs> it could slow things down. Uh, let me go ahead and hide that on mobile. So, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if I go to links, so another big one is creating links and I can drop it down, right? So if I'm going to put in a link that I don't want to have, uh, or want to attribute as a no follow for SEO reasons, I can do that simply by checking this off. That's pretty cool. Or the new attribution, which is a sponsored link, which uh, is the way that I understand it as a non-SEO professional, that uh, Google looks at these links and says, okay, we know that this is uh, sponsored, compensated somehow, or maybe like a uh, affiliate link or something like that, so that they're not docking you for you know trying to sneak in uh, sponsored content, right? At least you're declaring it and you're saying that these links are sponsored. So I really like that little feature, especially if you're doing a lot of affiliate linking, which I know a lot of people in the WordPress space are, they're just recommending other products and uh, why not do it the right way uh, through some kind of link formatting like that. Another cool feature is you can highlight text, which some people really want to do. <laughs> so you can see right here, there's a highlight color. I can highlight that red. And then I can change the text color to, let's say, that same background color. And if I preview this, you know, I can just kind of do these inline, you know, stylish uh, edits to my content. So that's just another quick little thing that Editor's Kit brings right, just to a, the table. a handful of things left for Editor's Kit. Again, you want to play with it. It's really specific to maybe a lot of long form content or specific content that you're building in your posts. Uh, but another cool thing is, is you can come into this drop down and you can do things like inline code, inline image, non-breaking space, strike through subscript, superscript, uppercase. You can do all do do all of that, you know, within a specific paragraph block, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess if you need those types of uh, those types of settings. But the last thing, which is not even really a a feature of the plugin, but just one of the things I really like that uh, that Jeffrey's added here is this little help button. And this help button has this nice little tips and tricks. And this is just me smiling as like a product slash marketing person. Uh, when you click on the tips and tricks, he's embedding uh, or he's, he's got a pop-up modal, which he's embedded his, uh, his Twitter lists of these features that he's highlighting about Gutenberg. So it's actually pretty useful. So if you're just learning Gutenberg, um, you can come in and see like, here's this tip, easily add links to text by just pasting them. This will save you a few key clicks on the format toolbar, command V, control V, whatever uh, that you're using, whichever platform you're using. Uh, that's pretty cool. Here's another tip. Uh, did you know that you can use markdown formatting as shortcuts for several blocks, uh, like pound, pound, space for heading, you know, so on and so forth. So just kind of cool. And as like a marketer, pretty nice because now people will now follow him on Twitter and just get more connected. Uh, so I kind of like that. And he's got some other helpful things in here, like you could actually remove this help button if you wanted to, uh, but you could go directly to his community help or just see an about, which is just uh, letting you know which version you're running on uh, you know, or get involved or you know report an issue or whatever like that. So kind of just a nice little touch 
um, that I'd like to see from you know more plugin authors uh, that are out there. So fun stuff. It's the slides plugin. It's the editor's kit plugin. It's blocks, 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 blocks. Uh, it's Gutenberg. It's the Matt Report store. If you want one of these fancy hats, get them in different colors. Uh, different formatting, uh, different logos. It's it's different logo colors, I should say. Um, it's all pretty fun, and it's going back to an amazing organization. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends and family in the WordPress space. We'll see you in the next video.